The political debate over climate policy has been highly charged this year. As of January 2019, the federal government plans to impose a carbon price on provinces and territories if they don't have one of their own or if their plans don't meet federal standards. For months, the Conservatives have been demanding an answer to one question. What will the carbon pricing plan cost Canadians? They accuse the government of covering the real answer up. But the Feds say it will depend on how provinces choose to use revenue from carbon taxes. Some economists have already been crunching the numbers. So what do we know and what don't we know? Joining me now from Calgary is Jennifer Winter, Director of Energy and Environmental Policy at the University of Calgary School of Public Policy. Hi, Professor Winter. Great to have you on the show. Thanks for having me. Uh, so Andrew Scheer, the leader of the Federal Conservative Party, tweeted an image of what the carbon tax will cost Canadians in each province. And it says at the bottom of the image, source Jennifer Winter. Then someone from the Fraser Institute wrote an entire op-ed using your numbers. But you later tweeted that it's an inaccurate portrayal of your work. Why? So first of all, uh, what I calculated was based on a request from the Senate, and I did this in April 2017. And so what I calculated is what a carbon tax could cost, and it most closely resembles, say, a BC-style uh, tax on combustion. But it's not the same thing as the proposed federal policies or any of the proposed provincial policies. So my numbers can be considered, uh, say, uh, like a high watermark for what carbon tax costs could or so what carbon taxes could cost Canadian households, but I wouldn't call them what the carbon tax would cost Canadian households. Gotcha. So were you surprised at all that your work was being used in the way that it was? You know, a, a little bit, because part of it was, it was like, oh, finally there are numbers. And, you know, this information has been available for over a year. And I know there have been others who have also calculated what potential carbon tax costs could be. So it's, I mean, it's portraying this as some surprising or top secret thing is you know, just not accurate, unfortunately. And it's, it's really unfortunate that something that i had um, done and what others have done is being used in this way. I think part of the reason it was, and not, not that it's justifiable, but because this was a huge political issue over the past few months, uh, the opposition had been demanding to know, what does your carbon tax, asking of the government in question period every day, what is it going to cost the average household? And then there was this whole debate over whether or not that information was ever going to be made public. Can I ask you, though, from a, from a nonpartisan perspective, can it be objectively ascertained what that will actually cost the average household? Well, y yes and no, of course. Um, so part of the problem is the federal government has proposed what a c carbon pricing system would look like um, if provinces don't develop their own. Um, and many provinces are developing their own pricing system, be it a carbon tax like in Alberta or BC, or a cap and trade system in Quebec and maybe Ontario. And so you know, to calculate the costs to the average household, you have to make a lot of simplifying assumptions, which is what I did. And, um, you know, it's not going to encapsulate all of the intricacies of the actual policy proposals. So we can, you know, do a rough approximation, but I wouldn't say that it's going to be easy or, or quick to actually calculate what the costs are to the average household in each province based on the specifics of individual policies. There's a lot going on and, and that's part of the issue. Is it a time thing? Like once, once each province does have something in place, whether it be their own system or whether it be the federal plan, w is there the possibility at that point that it can then be calculated? Mm -hmm. So part of it is time, and part of it is knowing all the little bits of the policy. And then, you know, a good portion of it is what are the complementary policies that go along with the carbon tax. For example, in Alberta, the, um, the government of Alberta has um, 
frozen household electricity prices. And so that means that the carbon tax no, won't necessarily be passed through in electricity prices. And so that'll have a big impact. It also depends on what is being used for electricity generation. And of course, what provinces choose to do with the revenue, whether it's going to be rebated to households or lower other taxes. All of those, you know, we have to know the details before we can even begin to calculate what the impact are. I guess I guess what I'm trying to ask though is is there any way out of the politics of, of all of this you know is there a way to get a straight answer uh, to, to the question so I, I think it's the, the the straight answer to the question is yes we can calculate what approximate cost would be under specific assumptions and we can say what the cost to the average household is I've done that but again it's I mean to incorporate every detail of the policy it's you know it's essentially not worth the effort when we can be good enough with some you know fairly reasonable assumptions and I mean the uh, I mean one of the challenges is depending on your politics you're either going to choose the lowest number or the highest possible number and so you know that's an issue too okay I'll leave it there thanks a lot professor winter appreciate your time my pleasure thanks for having me